So let's consider example problem number one from lab number one, but it's re-employed as an example problem for lab number two. And I'm going to do it using a stereo net, and you're going to see that it, it's far easier and simpler to do using a stereo net. In all honesty, with a familiarity with stereo nets and, and that, I could do this problem in probably two or three minutes using a stereo net. Of course, I'm going to take my time to explain the steps as I go through it now. So let me remind you that it states that a plane strikes 020 and dips 35 degrees toward the southeast. This is the very same wording we saw before. By the right arm rule, this is 02035, okay. But the task is to find the apparent dip in a vertical section that trends 070. All right, so, and I'm gonna, I think it'll just fit here on this piece of paper if I do it like this. So again, what I've, what I've got here is a stereo net, right? Now I'm using a light table. And the reason I'm using a light table is that I'm gonna use a pen on a regular piece of paper. And to see the stereo net well through all of that, a light table is handy. I do not recommend using a pen. When you do it, you should use tracing paper as is traditionally done, and you should use a pencil so you can erase your mistakes. If I make a mistake, which I could very well do, I will not be able to erase it. So I would suggest not using a pen. Here we go. Again, I've got a stereo net here. I'm gonna put my piece of paper over it. I'm going to penetrate it with the tack at the center. That's right there, all right? I'm going to mark north. There's that mark. And I'm going to trace the primitive grade circle. All right. Done. Primitive grade circle. I've marked north. Now I'll go ahead and, and uh, I'm going to do two things now while it's in this position. You've got to realize when the overlay is in this position, I can put compass directions on here. Compass directions are labeled and identified around the circumference of the uh, stereo net along the primitive grade circle. I'm going to make sure this is aligned correctly on north. And I'm going to mark 020. That's this mark. I'm labeling it larger than I normally would, so you can see it, 020. I'm also going to mark 070. Okay, those are the two compass directions of interest here. I am now anticipating how this is going to look. That is, I, I need to represent the plane itself as a great circle for this problem. Now the plane strikes 020, that's this mark. It dips 35 degrees to the southeast, which means that a great circle representing that plane is going to be over here like this. And it's going to be aligned along a, uh, one of these great circles at a 35 degree angle. In order to make that happen, I'm going to rotate that to north. Okay. I'm going to count inward from the outside. Recall that a, a horizontal plane will plot at the primitive great circle, right? A vertical plane will plot at the middle, the great circle, that is. And something in between will plot in between. This horizontal axis, the east-west axis, is graduated 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 degrees to the center. So I need to count in. 35 degrees, 10, 20, 35 degrees right there. And then I want to trace that great circle at 35 degrees. 
You notice I turned the entire stereo net to do that. I did that because being right-handed is just more comfortable to draw an arc this way. And I can do a better job. But I was very careful to leave it registered on the north mark on the stereo net. So that, then, is the great circle representation. I'll tell you what, let me label something for you. Um, I'm going to put this back here and label this. It's not really necessary to label it, but that, then, is the 35 degree dip for that plane. All right. Now, I need to find the apparent dip in this direction, 070. That's trivial. All I need to do, I'll just rotate that down to the east-west axis. If I want, I can put a dot here and count the angle. 10, 20, 8 degrees. And that problem is done. This, of course, is my um, hemisphere model, right? I'm back to my hemisphere. It's set up to simulate example problem number one. Right, The great circle, shown here at the circumference of the half circle, if you will, representing the plane, that represents a plane that dips 35 degrees to the southeast. The strike should be over here at about 020 for example problem number one. The green line should point in the direction 070. And so that is the direction of interest that we wish to determine the apparent dip for. I'll also point out that this black line, then, is the dip direction. And I'll remind you that the pole plots over here. If the plane dips 35 degrees, then the pole plunges off in that direction at, what, 55 degrees. So if I remove the green line, what it's going to reveal is what's underneath it. And what's underneath it? is the apparent dip. So let me remove this. All right. So now you see um, a green highlighted line right here. It lies within the plane. And the vertical angle between horizontal and that line, I don't know if I'm, if I'm doing a good job of representing it, right? That vertical angle is the 28 degree apparent dip angle in that direction, 070. Let's see, can I show enough of it? So this angle right here, 28 degrees, is that angle right there. The apparent dip. All right, this angle, 35 degrees, is this angle right here, the actual dip in the dip direction, right? And this, then, of course, is the dip direction. There was no need to plot a pole in this case, and it served no real purpose, but in other problems, it would serve a purpose, some problems. Let me just, I'm just gonna put that pole on here for the sake of putting it on here and to show you how that would be done. And the, the time to have done this was when I initially plotted this great circle. You'll realize I've returned it to this position such that the strike of the plane is on the north tick, all right, north on the stereo net. The simplest way to plot the pole to this plane, having a 35 de degree dip in that direction, is to simply count from the center outward 10, 20, 30, five degrees. That is the pole to that plane. Now, notice this. I said before that the plunge of the pole 
which is actually this angle, is complementary to the dip of the plane. Right. All right. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 5. This angle is the 55 degree plunge of the pole to that plane. But we accomplished it by counting 35 degrees outward from the center. And I just find that to be a simpler way to do it. So I'm just going to label that pole. There's nothing else I can think of to do with this problem. But realize, I could have found that apparent dip in no time using a stereo net.